So this is Craig. He presents with an expanding lesion in the lobule portion of his ear over the course of the last week and a half. He's had a history of infected cysts and abscesses. So the trick here is just doing this so you have as good a cosmetic result as possible. So I'd typically I'd avoid the front of it and I would incise along the back so it'll heal nicer for us. The other aspect with respect to the nerve supply of the ear, I've already done a block around the ear, so hopefully, we've talked about this before, when it's infected or getting infected, it'll affect the anesthesia. By doing a block around the ear, hopefully we'll find that he's a lot more comfortable with this. Now I will add some extra in at the base, which you would argue may not be absolutely necessary, but I would do it so you can maximize comfort. Is Craig gonna feel a bit of a poke here? Or maybe you won't, do you feel that? Nope. Good. You can feel some pressure. Now the pressure you'll still feel, because again we're putting more fluid into a space. You can see that blanch as the blood vessels collapse a little bit. And this is something that hopefully won't need to do any packing or anything of this nature. And if it's cystic, we may have to collapse down some um, loculations that are there. And, and sometimes the lobby of the ear can be a decent third space and have that happen to it. You okay there? Yep. That, that didn't feel that. Does that hurt? A little bit, yeah. Do you feel pain or pressure? It was pain just in the very tip of the lobe. But right now you're okay with that? Yep, that's fine now. Okay. So let me know if that changes at all. Okay. So again, for this, when I'm doing incisions, I'll use a number 11 blade. I'll just reverse this here. Do it gently. Do a little poke here. You okay? Yep. You can see that drain starts to come out. So you can see that there. There is some component of keratin there. So that would lend away from just being pure abscess. Remember, abscess doesn't have a capsule to it. And it's just white cells, as opposed to when you start seeing the thicker stuff, then at some level here, you're gonna see that there's a, there's a cyst that's there. Now again, because this is infected, we can't get the um, capsule out right now, so it's gonna be more a function of settling this down. You okay with that pressure? Mm -hmm. That's fine. And if you're thinking in your head what typically causes this, we're looking at again the common bacteria to the skin. So in order of importance, we'll see if you're thinking of them in your head. So Staph aureus is usually the most common one, and that's the one that methicillin resistant Staph aureus, MRSA is the one that people are more familiar with. I'm just gonna extend this a little bit. Followed by group B hemolytic strep. And then the third category we see here we call crony bacteria. So once I've opened that up a little bit, I use a bit of a blunt dissection just to see if I can break down some loculations. Which the lobe, you're not gonna get a lot with this, but just to open it up a little bit. You okay with that, Craig? Mm -hmm. Just like that, and I'm gonna do the same thing with just a little bit of a curette, just here, and just scrape the wall just a little bit. Just a touch. So, and this is where I'm going to see if we can send away uh, a swab of this. I um, mean, again, avoid the tendency when you're doing this to swab the pussy stuff that comes out. So, keep in mind again, that's just dead cells, it won't give you much of a culture. And you're really supposed to, if you look at it, when you take a culture properly, you're really supposed to clean it out over a, a long period of time. And that's something as physicians we're probably not the best at. And we're probably sending a lot of samples away that could be done better. So I'm just going to irrigate just a touch before I do that. You okay? Mm-hmm. 
very good. So this is now our swab. It doesn't matter if it's serous or serous sanguinous, it'll still, if we catch the bacteria, it'll grow. So I'll send that off. And I'm just gonna irrigate that one more time. Just like that. And you see it's, so the pressure from the, from the front part it's less swollen through there. Still a little bit that's there. And all we're gonna do now is we're gonna put a pressure dressing on the ear, so we're not gonna seal that, that would be a mistake. And then we'll have to let that heal and see whether there's a cyst we can go after afterwards and get the capsule out. You'll see looking at it, if you can, I don't know if you can appreciate that, but there's no real capsule to go after there. You can't see any margins of any kind that's in there. So we'll seal that up and that should be it, all done.